Well, then how about the marginal effects in nonlinear models? So let's say we have this uh, nonlinear function here, y equal to point, negative point two, x squared plus two. Right? Again, you know, uh, we can just regard the error term for a moment. Well, the kind of properties, very nice properties we have in, uh, excuse me, of marginal effects in linear models disappear right away. That is, in nonlinear models, the marginal effects of predictors on the response variable vary with the values of predictor. That's critical. That's critical. So here I graph this function here, and I pick different point, okay, uh, on the curve, uh, corresponding to different values of x. Then I also graph the marginal effects. So here, let's uh, look at this point here. This point, a negative three. 0.2. Okay, what is marginal effect? Well, of course, we can carry out uh, the mathematical computation, right? Uh, to look at its calculus. So how do it? Well, we take first derivative of this function and set it to zero. Then we can compute its, uh, uh, you know, uh, peak point here. Well, we can also take the first derivative here, right? First derivative here, okay? Uh, then plug in the x value. Plug in the x value here, okay? And compute its slope, okay? So it turns out the slope here is positive 1.2. And the thing is how to interpret that 1.2, that number. Well, turns out it should be understood as the instantaneous effect of x here, this point here, on the response variable. And the slope here, this line, well represents that relationship because the slope is equal to 1.2, meaning that in the neighborhood, close proximity of this point, if we're going to move x by one unit, okay, on a subjective scale, y should increase by 1.2 units. Okay, of course, you know, uh, increasing x by one unit, that's a large increase, right? That's not kind of instantaneous effect. Uh, but regardless, even if we uh, increase x by very small, that is infinitesimal amount in x, of course, we're going to have some response in y. Y going to change. But delta y, that is the amount of change in y, the amount of change in x, okay? When the amount of change in, in x is very, very small, regardless, that ratio is going to be equal to what? 1.2. And let's look at the point here, the peak point, uh, when the derivative is set to zero. Here, we know that, well, because the slope is zero, okay? So the effect of x and y at that point uh, in the very close proximity uh, of, of this point here the peak point is zero what about this point well it's pretty obvious the slope is negative the slope is negative it turns out you know after i perform some calculus computation turns out the slope is equal to what negative 1.2 what is that point 0.3 and, and 0 0.2. Uh, this is the coordinate uh, for this point, circle. How to interpret? Well, in this case, we're going to say, well, the instantaneous effect of x at this point on y is equal to what? Negative 1.2. Uh, that is, here, if we're going to increase x in the neighborhood, close proximity of this point, very close proximity of, of, of this point, or in a very small area of neighborhood of this point, if we change x by, you know, small amount, very small amount, of course, we're going to have change in y, right? Because y is a function of x. Then the change in y, that is delta y, over delta x, 
should be equal to what? Negative 1.2. Okay? Meaning that in that neighborhood, for each unit increase in x, we would expect y to decrease by 1.2 units on a scale of y, on a scale of y. 